This is KGW News at 11. Now we start tonight with the latest on a deadly earthquake in Morocco. The 6.8 magnitude quake hit Friday afternoon and has killed more than 2,000 people. New video from security cameras shows the moment that people ran for their lives and onto the streets before buildings there crumbled from the quake. Along with the dead, more than 2,000 people are also hurt, at least 1,400 of them in critical condition. Ashley Grams talked to those living in Oregon whose hearts are reeling for friends and family impacted in Morocco. Let's take a look at where this 6.8 magnitude earthquake hit the high Atlas Mountains just south of the city of Marrakesh. While Morocco is thousands of miles away, the tragedy is felt even here in downtown Portland. This video shows part of the 6.8 magnitude earthquake that hit Morocco. You can hear the sirens. It just like lasted for so long. It just kept like shaking. We we're just like, oh my, like we just like kept looking around at each other in disbelief. That's Joseph Niedermeyer, a Portlander on vacation when the quake hit. Luckily, he was safe, but there were many people who didn't make it out. Just uh, pray for right now. I just like ask everybody to pray for Morocco. Kareem lives in Portland, but his wife and daughter are in Morocco. My heart felt um, broken and I called him as soon as I get uh, off work. Naji, the owner of Kasbah Moroccan Cafe in Old Town, did the same thing, picking up his phone to call his family. People start calling, people start like check, checking on each other, sharing phone numbers. Both say their families are safe, but scared. You don't know what could happen. You don't know what could happen. The street were like um, full of people and they were panicking and they did not know what to do. Many Moroccans spent the night outside. They were like afraid to go back to where they live. Um, so they were just everybody in the street waiting for another um, earthquake. Now a country suffering great loss tries to pick up the pieces. Any tragedy happened to anyone who will be there to help them. And Kareem just wants his wife and daughter home safe. She's like, can't wait. And me too. I can't wait to see them here in Portland. <laughs> Rescue workers are still making their way into the mountains to some of the more remote areas near the epicenter where they expect to see some of the worst damage. Ashley Grams, KGW News. And this comes as the University of Oregon is gearing up to lead a new earthquake research center. Its purpose will be to study the Cascadia subduction zone and strengthen earthquake preparedness. The Cascadia Region Earthquake Science Center, or Crescent, includes 14 universities and 40 researchers. They'll be involved in studying the possible impacts of a major earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone. They say researching the potential effects of the big one could be life-saving. What we can do is tell you when it does happen, the shaking should be about this much. It should go on for this long. The tsunami should go this far inland and should be about this deep. And so even if the even if we can't tell you when, knowing that can really help you to plan, to prepare, right? Knowledge is power. And if you know what's coming, you can take actions. Well, Melgar says the main goal of the center is to bring together the large group of geoscientists to march together to the beat of a single drum. That way they can collaborate and identify key priorities instead of working from institutions competing with each other. Even though we've made a lot of significant scientific advancements in the last few years, uh, there's uh, still a ways to go. And so having a center like this allows uh, the scientific community to work cohesively to solve those problems and then also work directly with community partners, state agencies, etc., to make sure that the science is as um, societally impactful as possible. The scientists in the center will use the latest technology to better prepare communities by improving infrastructure and planning more specific emergency plans. All right, all calm here in Portland tonight after a really nice day. Joe Ranieri is in the Weather Center. Joe, what's next? Yeah, well, what's next is another round of sunshine. We saw temperatures earlier this afternoon, Timmy, uh, right around the mid to the upper 80s. Some of us got very close to seeing that 90 degree mark once again. Uh, right now, we're seeing a temperature of 71 degrees under clear skies. And starting things off tomorrow, we are going to be looking at clear skies. The only little hiccup you might run into, a little bit of some uh, high cirrus clouds throughout the later part of the morning and into the afternoon. Those 
high wispy clouds is what those look like. Right now we're seeing temperatures in the mid to the upper 60s over in parts of Washington County, both King City and Hillsborough seeing temperatures in the low to the mid 60s along the east side of the state upper 50s, low 60s, just a little bit cooler out there as we uh, start to get a little bit closer to fall. Uh, temperatures right now, though, or I should say for this afternoon, we're in the mid to the upper 80s, 86 over in Hillsborough. Again, at the Portland International Airport, we saw temperatures close to 90 degrees. So picture perfect weather ahead. Uh, daytime highs for your Sunday will be right around the low to mid night, low to mid 80s. Excuse me. I do have 90s, Tim, in the forecast, at least for two days later in the week. I'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. All right, Joe, thanks. We'll see you then. Well, for years, a memorial for firefighters on Burnside has been forgotten. In fact, the David Campbell Memorial has been trashed and spray painted. Well, this week, it got even worse when someone removed nameplates of firefighters who've given their lives. Thomas Schultz has more. For close to a century, this memorial has been a part of Southwest Portland, guarding the gates of Providence Park. Though for years, it's been a shell of what it once was. It's just senseless vandalism. The David Campbell Memorial, named after Portland's fire chief from more than a century ago. On June 26, 1911, Chief Campbell responded to a massive fire at the Union Oil Distributing Plant. He borrowed a coat from one of his men and attacked the fire from inside. A massive explosion blew off the roof. Chief Campbell never made it out. After that, the citizens of Portland built this memorial honoring Chief Campbell and the subsequent firefighters who died in the line of duty after him. But their sacrifices have been forgotten in their memory taken. Literally destroyed, damaged, you know, disappeared. Don Porth uh, spent 27 here. years fighting Portland fires. Now he takes care of this memorial. He's seen his fair share of graffiti. But this is worse than usual. Brass nameplates stolen, Italian limestone broken, and lantern lenses shattered. And it's a shame that people go about and vandalize an area like this. Christian has lived on Portland streets for years. He spends a lot of time here and sees people desecrate the memorial often. Imagine being a firefighter that died, you know? But why would someone steal their brass nameplates? You know, it's not like aluminum cans where it's five, ten cents. It's um, by the pound, so it's like, I think, like three dollars a pound. A few bucks to melt down a plaque of someone who gave their life. While the memorial has long been forgotten by many, they were remembered here. But now the only ones who will remember them are those trying to keep their legacies alive. Carl Gunster, his nameplate is no longer here, died in a fire in the May Apartments in 1921. In Southwest Portland, Thomas Schultz, KGW News. Well, now the plan is to take out the remaining brass nameplates and store them in a safe place. In fact, the plaza is scheduled to be renovated in a year, and the idea is to put the plaques back at that memorial then with an extra layer of protection.